Good morning, everybody. We're live from the Bird House. It is the very end of July. It's July 29th. And today we're giving you an update about goldfinches who nest really late in the season. And then the different kinds of birds and insects you could find in your yard this time of the year. As always, we love to know who's on. You can say hello in the comments. If you have any questions, you can throw those in there. And we'd love to know what kind of things you're seeing. So definitely put those in the comments as well if you've got some baby birds coming to your feeders you're not alone a lot of people are reporting lots of young birds out there um, so I'll share some of your photos here as well and yeah like I said go ahead and put any questions or comments that you have um, in the comment bar so um, goldfinches nest really late in the season so um, when spring first starts we talk about bluebirds are starting to nest super early they're one of our earliest nesting songbirds sometimes starting as early as march but really it's going to be around april once things start warming up and we start to get more insects flying around that's when you start seeing bluebirds do, doing their nesting behavior, starting to bring in that nesting material to the houses but goldfinches don't start nesting until some plants start to go to down and go to seed. Um, goldfinches, unlike a lot of other songbirds, don't eat any insect material. They eat very, very little insect material. They really eat all seeds. So they don't switch their diet up like a lot of birds do in the spring and summer. They switch to a diet of mostly insects because they're so plentiful. Um, but goldfinches don't do that. So they start nesting later on in the season when they're, the seeds are plentiful, so they have plenty of things for their young to feed on. So goldfinches, they eat seeds almost exclusively. They have unpredictable migration. They do move around a lot, but it is very unpredictable. So it's not, uh, it's not uncommon to have them at your feeders for a while, several weeks at a time sometimes, and then all of a sudden they just disappear. That happens to me all the time. We get phone calls about it all the time. They're very unpredictable with their movements. And they may fly up to five miles a day looking for reliable food sources. They're found all across the United States. And when they are in flight, they have a little call that sounds like they're saying potato chip. So they have a pretty distinctive call when they're in flight. And then we do have goldfinches here all year round. So right now they have that, the males have that bright yellow plumage. They actually molt twice a year, which is uh, uncommon for songbirds. Usually they don't do two full molts like the goldfinches do. Um, right before fall migration, um, some songbirds will molt some of their feathers and get some more flight feathers in for that trip. But goldfinches will molt all their feathers twice a year. So in the winter time, they are not that bright gold, but they look like this, more that drab kind of yellowish, uh, you know, yellowish olive, olive color. And then in the spring, they'll molt these feathers and be bright, bright yellow again. So we do have them here all year round. And goldfinches also have what's called undulating flight. So when they are flying, they kind of flap and go up and then down. So they're kind of like going like a roller coaster. And that's called undulating flight. Uh, woodpeckers do that too. So they do have a, not only a distinctive flight call, the little chip calls, but they also have pretty distinctive flight patterns as well. They can have one to two broods a year, so they can have up to two rounds of young. And this is what their nests look like. It's a small cup nest. They don't use houses or anything like that. Um, the female will build the nest using plant fibers, spider webs, and down from thistle. So it's very, very fine and, and soft. The next construction takes four to 10 days, and it's usually three to seven feet above the ground. And they can lay anywhere between three and seven eggs, which are pale blue. And just like other songbirds, the more experienced the female is, she tends to lay more eggs. The older she is, she tends to lay more. She will sit on those eggs for 10 to 12 days. And after that, those eggs will hatch and they will be in the nest for anywhere between 11 and 15 days. And then they are out in the world. So uh, one way to attract goldfinches because they don't nest in houses is to put up a nesting ball. And this is a photo that had been sent in um, years past from Chris M who showed the goldfinch going after her nesting material ball. So we do have these these uh, all natural 
cotton nesting balls, which the birds absolutely love. And they'll pick the nesting material out of there to sometimes build their nest if it's a goldfinch because they use the really fluffy material or some birds will just use it to even line their nest so it gives their eggs a little bit of padding so the nesting balls are really the best way you can attract some nesting nesting uh, goldfinches to your yard so we do have plenty of those um, if you are seeing the goldfinches going after some plant down and things in your yard still if they're building a nest for that second brood um, you might want to get some more nesting material for them and one thing to keep in mind too is to not use dryer lint it's just not known if the chemicals that are in detergents if they can harm the birds in any way so you don't want to use any kind of dryer lint if you're using um, traditional detergents for your laundry and this is just a photo of what you might see now with the goldfinches. Not only do they grab the plant down from uh, the plants like this thistle, but then they'll also feed from the seeds. So um, there's some activity there that had been sent in earlier by Bob each. Um, and then it is fledgling time. We've been talking about that quite a lot. Lots of baby birds out there right now so it is very common to see little birds hopping around on the ground like this and it doesn't mean they're injured it doesn't mean they're they're sick or in danger uh, this is super common once they leave the nest they tend to be on the ground for a couple of days the parents will still come and visit them and feed them and then once their feathers have grown in a little bit more they will um, they'll kind of disperse and be on their way or be higher up in the trees so it's not uncommon at all to see them hopping around on the ground or kind of low in some shrubs as they are just leaving the nest and some birds like the house sparrows can have two to three broods a year um, this is what the books say but um, i've heard some of our customers say that they've seen them have up to maybe five broods a year so they will just keep on nesting throughout the whole summer and into the fall so you'll have lots of baby sparrows around if you um, if you feed birds or if you have any houses out i'm sure you've seen them around the, the little young are hopping around on the ground trying to get their parents to feed them and that is activity that you'll probably see all summer long the morning doves will have two broods a year and they start kind of early as well for nesting so um, you might have seen some younger morning doves out there and then the robins can have two to three broods a year so all of these birds will continue to have babies as the season goes on so you'll still see some baby birds even into next month or so and uh, here's some photos that were sent in in a previous year from Chris M who said these little robins are on the verge of fledging at two weeks old. So, um, and these were, this is from uh, last year and she had some fledging around July 31st. So right around this time, she had some more robins leaving the nest. So be, out, uh, be on the lookout for some more young robins out there as well and blue jays. I've been seeing lots of young blue jays out there. Sometimes they look kind of silly with their crest knot all the way um, in so they can look kind of bald and look like they're still growing into their feathers, which they are. So lots of blue jays out there as well. And bluebirds too. Bluebirds can have up to three broods a year. So keep an eye out for them and the young will stick around to help raise the newest broods as the parents keep having babies for that year. So bluebirds definitely out there too still in boxes here's some other baby bird photos sent in from previous years there's an eastern towhee which you might find underneath your feeders in general they don't come to backyards all too often but every once in a while you might happen upon one um bob said heard an eastern towhee singing and singing close by but was surprised to see a young eastern towhee there were a few around dad there were a few around and dad was keeping a close eye on them and then here's some other behavior which is pretty interesting this is a chipping sparrow so a very little sparrow feeding a baby cowbird we talk about cowbirds and how they're what's called a nest parasite so they will the females will lay their eggs in the nest of other birds and then those birds will raise the cowbirds and so this is what it looks like so this is a tiny little chipping sparrow one of the smallest sparrows we have around here and that very big fledgling cowbird so if you see a large bird hopping around following a small parent that's going to be 
a cowbird, most likely. So some kind of neat behavior there. Cardinals can have up to two broods a year, so you might still see some of them around. Uh, again, kind of looking a little awkward, like they're growing into their feathers. They can sometimes be all have their head all bald all at once as they're growing into their feathers. And you can tell you have a juvenile if you're trying to tell the difference between a juvenile or a female, sometimes they can look really similar. The juveniles will have a, a grayish colored beak, and as they get older, that'll turn orange. So uh, if we see something, a cardinal with a gray beak, that's going to be your juvenile. Um, this, there's a baby tufted titmice out there as well. Same kind of behavior. They'll beg for food from their parents and so you might see them coming to feeders also as the parents kind of show them some different food sources around you might start to see things like the tufted titmouse or chickadees coming back to your feeders and this is what the young red-bellied woodpecker looks like they don't have any red on the back of their head yet as as they're just leaving the nest so they're very very gray in color but they still have that speckly black and white back and that's how you can identify them as the red-bellied woodpecker something like a flicker isn't going to have that black and white back like that um, hummingbirds have been kind of scarce still we've been talking about that as the season has been going on not a lot of reports of hummingbirds this year from people but lots of butterfly and bug activity which is fun in the summertime here's a black swallowtail sent in by Lynn. And then it's definitely monarch butterfly time. If you've never seen the caterpillars of monarch butterflies, we do have some in the store right now that we're feeding. And some of them actually, as of this morning, were hanging upside down in their J stage, ready to become a chrysalis. And um, this is a monarch caterpillar right here. They're uh, black, black and white and yellow striped. And you can find them most of the time on common milkweed, but they'll also lay the, the the adults will also lay their eggs on the swamp milkweed and the butterfly weed. So if you've got any of those in your garden, keep an eye out for the monarch butterfly. And of course, this is what it looks, what the butterfly looks like. I've seen several of them flying around in my yard, um, hopefully laying some eggs. So if you also, another thing to look out for, if you do have milkweed, there's other things that you can find on the plants, which are totally fine. Um, like this kind of crazy looking creature. These are called milkweed tussock moths. And picture doesn't show it super well, but they are bright orange and black and white. And they've got these tufts and they are going to be in groups. So normally when you see a monarch caterpillar, you just tend to see one at a time, one per plant. But that's not the case with these milkweed tussock moth caterpillars. They uh, the, the adults will lay their eggs in groups and so you'll have a whole bunch of them on one plant and it's just another kind of cool insect you might get on your milkweed plant and if they're when disturbed they tend to kind of tumble off so if you try to kind of pull up the leaf and look at them better they might just kind of roll and tumble off which is just kind of their behavior and what they do and one thing to look for if you are trying to find caterpillars either in your yard or out uh, you know out when you're hiking or out in the field somewhere is look for their poop which actually has a fancy name called frass and uh, that's a really good way to find them they are just eating machines so they eat and eat and eat and it comes out the other end and um, that is a good way to find your caterpillars if you're looking for some look for the signs that they leave behind there's still a lot of lightning bugs out there and or fireflies and this is what they look like during the day you can see them a lot of the times just hanging out in the gardens sitting perched on plants they do have pretty voracious larvae too this is what their larva looks like and they also have the ability to glow so you might see them crawling around the grass at night you might see something kind of glowing from the grass probably the firefly larva so just like other insects they start off as an egg the egg hatches into the larva they pupate and then out comes the adult so it's still firefly time if you happen to be looking for different bugs out at night there's a lot of them out there right now if you put out a sheet with some lights onto it you might attract some different things this time of the year like this is called <clears throat> the fish fly or dobson fly often found by water because they also have aquatic larvae um katydids are out there 
Acadidid is in the same family as grasshoppers, but you can tell you have Acadidid if they have a really long antenna. So grasshoppers have like really, really short little stumpy antenna, but Acadidids have these really, really long antenna. And this is called the slender meadow Acadidid. Um, some other things to look out for, especially if you're by water, this is called a caddis fly, something else that has aquatic larvae, marsh flies, uh, lichen moths, you never know what you'll see out there. I saw this net winged beetle a couple weeks ago, something kind of a little bit different. And then this soldier beetle hanging out, crawling all over a dead log. So pretty interesting, big bug there. And finally, if you do put out any kind of lights for bugs, you never know who might just show up. Um, I had this happen, I think it was last year when I had my, my light out, a toad came and started eating all the bugs off of the sheet, which was pretty funny to watch. So you never know what you'll see if you uh, if you try to attract those bugs at night. So um, if anybody has any questions, you can throw those in the comments. I should mention that today at the birdhouse, actually today and tomorrow, we have a jigsaw puzzle swap. So that's going on all weekend long. You can come in anytime today or tomorrow. We're open 10 till 6 today, which is Saturday, and 10 till 5 on Sunday. And you can bring in as many puzzles as you want and swap them out for some that are new to you. So that's always very popular. And that is going on all weekend long here. So feel free to stop in and participate in that. We are booking more dates. Also, we've been getting a lot of phone calls about the Sam Patch birding boat rides, um, which have all been sold out and sold out pretty quickly, but we will have a couple more dates at least in the fall. So if you're interested in that, we will have some more dates announced soon. We just had another one on Thursday, which was a lot of fun, and um, we had good weather for it too, which was really nice. So we will be announcing some more dates from those uh, on those soon. So be on the lookout for that. Keep an eye out on our Facebook and on our Instagram. We'll also send out emails with the uh, with those links um, as soon as we have them. So looks like um, Randy is on. He says, good morning, Liz and every birdie. Stephanie is on saying, good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Um, Jen is on and says, good morning, everyone. We are seeing lots of birds with their babies at our feeders. And a rose-breasted grosbeak showed up this week, which comes frequently throughout the day. How cool is that? Yeah, a lot of people uh, see rose-breasted grosbeaks in the spring as they're migrating in. Around that same time, you start seeing orioles. You tend to start seeing rose-breasted grosbeaks coming through to seed feeders. Some people are lucky enough to get them all summer long, but most people don't. Most people only get them in that early springtime. So it's really neat that you're seeing one um, coming uh, back to your feeders. Very cool. Uh, Mary Lynn is on and says, great, we'll see you this weekend for Puzzle Exchange. All right, sounds good. I'll be here all weekend. Um, Stephanie says, I started hearing the cicadas yesterday. Oh, this is a sure sign of summer when you start to hear the cicadas and we should show actually in an upcoming broadcast what they look like um, not only the adults but what's called their nymphs when they kind of emerge from the ground and they tend to you, you probably have seen their exoskeletons either on the side of a tree or on one of your plants the cicadas the adult cicadas will hatch out of there and um, their their little shells kind of look alien looking which is pretty fun to find in the garden so we'll share some of those on our next broadcast I ship is on says morning and sharing a bunch of little bug emojis how cute um stephanie says have lots of fireflies too yes i i've been seeing a ton of fireflies also and the key to fireflies just like other insects especially um, butterflies and things too if you're trying to attract them is keep in mind you want something for every piece of their life cycle so not just um flowers for them to feed on, but things for them to lay their eggs on, places for them to hide. So you want to make sure you stay away from spraying chemicals and that kind of thing in your yard if you want to attract uh, all the fun insects, which of course bring the other wildlife as well. So looks like that's everybody's comments and questions for the day. We'll be back on Tuesday with another broadcast. And until then, have a great weekend and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.